Stand if you would, please. Well, as we join together this afternoon, on behalf of the family, let me say thank you for being here for them and encouraging and support, supporting them. And as we come together with this family, as friends and church family, we're here today to celebrate the life of Shirley Ann Carroll. We remember a lady who was very loving, always caring for others, always at Oakland I, I hear story after story about how she was um, in the Sox group how she she in, went to Jerusalem with them how how she was chaperoning youth events and and most of the chaperones the people she was chaperoning um, are are adults with children and maybe even grandchildren of their own but you know it is it's always good to remember the life, the life that, that Shirley gave to everywhere she went, the life that she had and the love and joy that she had. We remember a lady of great hospitality to her family. Her family continued to tell me how her door was always open. And then I, I read uh, something on our, our church prayer group page, um, from Kenny Harris and he said you know she was like a second mom to me she she took care of people that she was around she loved them and encouraged them Shirley was faithful to God she was faithful to her family her church her church family and she was always ready to serve she joined Oakland Baptist Church on October 12th 1975 she was always a faithful member as long as she could be. And um, she was loved by everyone. She will be missed by all who knew her. Let's go to God in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we do love you. We praise you for this time where we can remember Shirley. Lord, we do pray for this family for these friends, for church family, for neighbors, for people that knew her. And Lord, just help us to continue to go forward as we grieve, as we miss her. We just pray, dear God, that you will give comfort, strength, peace to all those as they grieve, as they prepare for their new normal, birthdays, holidays, different days of the year, different places where they will remember the last time I was here, I was with grandma or mom or whatever they knew her by. She was special to her family. So God bless them, comfort them, give them peace during this difficult time. We pray in Jesus name. Amen. Well, one of the things that the family shared with me, because I always meet with the family and I talk to them, and I ask them which scriptures they want read. I didn't have to ask this first one because they mentioned it way before I did. The grandchildren said, yes, Grandma taught us. I don't know if you called her Grandma or what, but she taught us Psalm 23. 
It was the first thing she ever taught us about God was Psalm 23. So when I was preparing with the service with them, I said, you know, I know one verse that we're reading for sure, and that's Psalm 23, and I will read that now. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we went on talking, and they shared, and they said, we, we want this next verse read. And it's Psalm, I'm sorry, it's Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31 about the virtuous woman about the woman that cares for and loves her family. Proverbs 31, verse 30 says this, Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And John 14, a promise that Jesus gave to all those who know him. He says, Let not your heart be troubled, You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, We do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me.
shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now. You know, when you hear about someone from their past, you know, I, I wish I would have been able to know Shirley before she, her health started waning, before her health started declining. I never, I will always remember her, her coming in with Bobby and sitting there on my left in the second or third row. You know, I'll never forget that. But her family was telling me some things about her, how she always had an open door policy for them. If they didn't have a place to stay or a place to eat or a place to live, they had Shirley's place. If they didn't have something, she would provide it if she could. She would always take care of them, feed them, Tony was talking about how she would walk with her every morning and how she remembered those walks and that special time, how Shirley took care of babies, two at the same time, I hear, and she was there. She had four sisters. They went on sister trips. Um, she took her grandchildren to Bedford Lake, and they said they remember her Christmas gifts a bubblicious, and how she would try to wrap it and disguise them, but they always knew what it was. But you know, they always, everyone I've spoke to spoke so highly of her, the kind acts, the, the goodness in her heart, the, the loving spirit that she had, just the way that she would light up a room when she came came in well you know you can tell a whole lot about a person from their family and and what they say because family knows you better than anybody and you know her family loved her continue to miss her and will always cherish the time that they had with her and her neighbors. She was a great neighbor, and one of her neighbors is going to come up and Beverly and read a poem that she wrote, or a poem. Come on up. Good afternoon. Actually, um, Brother Scotty gave me a little too much credit there it's not really a poem it's like a short short story so y'all stay awake um, about 53 years ago my husband and I moved into our new home of course we were young then believe it or not <laughs> and shortly after that there was another couple uh, who moved I won't say next door it was like between our front yard and their backyard anyway there they were our new neighbors I hadn't officially met them yet, I think my husband had, but it didn't take long as I got out of the car one day and this strong, happy sounding deep voice was like, hey, hi over there, and of course that was Richard. And along with Richard came Shirley and Patricia, and a little bit later came Bobby. We soon learned this was a blessing 
and D. Not only did we have a new house, we had these new neighbors who were friendly, down to earth, helpful, a family who we bonded with in a very close way. I can recall one time my husband, as I said, was young then. Some things he had done, some things he hadn't. He was building on a, a sidewalk outside, and this same voice was yelling across the way as Shirley was probably feeding Greg, who's my son, what are you doing over there? My husband replied, well, I'm trying to fix this porch or walk or whatever it was. And Richard came back and said, leave it alone. I'll do it. And the good part about it, he meant it, and he did. And Shirley, mm, Shirley was kind of like, I guess you'd say, the big sister. There wasn't a whole lot of difference in her age, but just a little bit. They were a little bit older than us. And maybe she was the big sister that I never had. Shirley soon, <coughs> excuse me, soon began her membership at Oakland with Patricia, and we watched her struggle with strength as Richard became very ill and passed away. And I do say with strength. I don't remember her taking any long, long leave of absence. It's just like truck, truck, trooper, trooper, go on, go forth, go do, go to the hospital, go to work, take care of the kids, whatever. Though her heart was breaking, she was able to still carry on. One of the things in her daily routine that stands, stands out in my mind so much is the fact that she, at that time, was working for GE. She had an early schedule. She had to get up very early. But before she went to work, she read her devotional books. Not one book, but books. That was a daily occurrence, to my knowledge, with Shirley. And that really, obviously, here at my age, I'm still remembering that made quite an impression. When others had a challenge or sadness to bear, there she was, one of, if not the first, to show up. Maybe a visit, food, or a financial blessing. She was indeed, and I feel like I'm kind of repeating things you've already learned. She was, and we, and we were not together. This was not fixed. <laughs> So you know it's true. She was a loving wife, mother, grandmother, friend, neighbor, church person, you name it. I jokingly say, here we go again, repeat, she had an open door policy. I don't think she knew kind of how to say no, even if it was a little inconvenient. Maybe it wasn't the right time, or maybe she was struggling with something. After all, you know, she was a young widow. So here they came. I think it started actually with Patricia and her young social life. Come on over, come on over. And they did in droves. My son was one of them. And the young man sitting out here on the third pew with the dark blue suit on was another one that was always there. Kids so often filled her home, not just family, which she had plenty of, but also others as well. Here she was later on as a, still a young widow needing to purchase a different car. It wasn't a new car, but I guess an upgrade, which delighted my son in that she gave, she had so much confidence in his young age to, you go with me and help me choose one. So they went out to do that at some point. But in the meantime, he was dating a young lady who was a, a very sweet girl, but maybe didn't have quite all the advantages as some do, so Shirley decided, I'm going to give her my car. And keep in mind, she had just started driving. So can you imagine, you're all excited, you know, oh boy, I get to drive, I've got my permit, and I don't have a car, and maybe granddaddy will let me drive his new, I think it was a Chrysler, and maybe you won't, probably ran through her mind. But anyway, here she is, as I said, a young widow, and she decided to give, not sell, not even for a ch small price, her car to this young lady who had just began her driving career. It was quite exciting as the car was washed and waxed and decorated with balloons, and it was sitting in our front yard at the end of a scavenger hunt. We took her all around, or my son did, somebody did, all these different places, 
And finally, she got to the end, and there was her brand new car. Happy tears flowed. Shirley was so happy that she could share that with her. Obviously, the girl was happy. Everybody was happy. Somehow, Shirley managed to work, keep house, and always prepare a good meal. I don't think she was totally into the TV dinners with each night. And I might add, she was a very attractive and neat appearance at all times. Hair all done up, makeup, the whole deal. She's not like I've been going around at home with my pajamas on till 4 o'clock. Oops, I didn't say that to y'all. Just forget I said it. I do have an excuse right now. But anyway, that's, that's the way she looked. Very attractive. Just kind of had it all going on. And like we've said earlier, always a big smile. She wore that so well. It helped light up the room. I have no idea of the numerous acts of uh, kindness, sacrifice, and so forth that she did. I just know that she did them. And if you knew her, you knew it too, because that was just her way of life. Um, I can recall one time, probably the earliest that I'd ever had a loved one that I lost. He was only 29 years old, had to go to Charlottesville, UVA. She didn't know him well at all. She may not have even met him. Here she comes with the goodies. That, that was her. As I said earlier, one of the first, if not the first, to go, oh, I know you're in trouble. I know you're hurting, and so here I am. Perhaps in a few words, we could describe her as a well-rounded, well, she was. She liked to laugh. She liked funny things. God-fearing, trustworthy, accommodating lady who knew people People aren't all perfect. I mean, hey, she lived next door to us, the horns. <laughs> but love them anyway. Just love them anyway. She was generous. And as again, she wore a smile and was very, very alive while she was here with us. So we thank you, Jesus, for our friend, neighbor, mother, mama, helper, grandmother, and more. Glory to the King for whom all blessings flow. And certainly Shirley and, and I forget her last name, before that, before she got married. Bowling, Bowling Carol. Glory to the King for her, from whom all blessings flow. And 
and I'll cherish the old rugged cross to my trophies at last I lay down and I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange I was thinking about what to share today. I was thinking of Shirley and her disease and how it changed her physically and emotionally and in many, many ways. And I was thinking, you know, to the family, let me remind you of this. You will not, when you think of her, you will think of those good days. You will not think of those last days. You will think of the good days. And I was, I was led to a scripture that is found in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. It says this, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God and who has given us the spirit as a guarantee. You know, those first five verses, and I'm going to read the next five as well, but those first five verses talk about these bodies, this time on earth as being temporary. Because when you think of a tent, what do you think about? People don't sit there and, you know, say, hey, I want to buy a tent when I grow up. They, they want to buy a house. They want a home. They want something more permanent. But these bodies, Paul, through the Holy Spirit, writes this. We know that if our earthly t house, this tent, is destroyed, it's temporary. It's not permanent. But then it says we have a building from God. Now, there you go. Paul is contrasting this temporary home, this body that is, from the time we're born, it, yeah, it grows and it grows, and, and we re, but at some point it starts decaying. It starts, we can't do what we used to do. We can't do the, physically do the things we'd like to do. But here's the great news. That's the temporary part. But the permanent part is this. We have a building, a permanent home, a permanent place with God. We have a permanent place where God dwells so that we can also dwell. See, I read John 14 earlier, and Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. He prepares a mansion for us. He prepares a permanent spot for us. This is temporary. Now, I've, I've heard people say this is practice. This is not practice. This is the real thing. Because what we do here determines our eternal home. This is genuine. This is the real thing. But this is not our life as we're going to spend it for eternity. Our life for eternity, if we know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we're, we're, is going to be in a building made by God, permanent. The body decays. The body gets sick. The mind gets Alzheimer's. 
that totally changes a person's response to people. Sometimes they can't talk. Sometimes they get angry. Sometimes they, but they change. But here's the great news. When Shirley passed, she passed from this life, this temporary dwelling, to a permanent home with a new body, a new mind. She is worshiping our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, right now. She is at home with the Lord. She has her permanent spot. Her temporary spot was here, yes. And we knew her. And we knew the kind things that she did. And we knew the way that she took care of family and neighbors and friends. And we knew the love that she had. And we knew all of these things. But all of these things were, were just still temporary. Because right now, she's at home with her Lord. And the Bible's very clear. When we get to be with him, he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Those are the words that he said to Shirley. She is already there. She's already at home. She already has her permanent dwelling place with the Lord. She's no longer suffering. Praise God for that. She's no longer hurting. Praise God for that. She's no longer confused. Praise God for that. She no longer needs help to eat. Praise God for that. She no longer needs what she needed in this temporary dwelling. Because that has passed. That is over for her. It's done. It's over. Well done, my good and faithful servant. See, our resurrected bodies are Secure. Paul is clear when he says we have a building that is going to last and it's going to last for eternity. Verse 2, he says, for in this life we groan. We know that. We groan. Sometimes when we stand up, sometimes, sometimes when we sit down, we groan. And the things we used to be able to do, we can't do. But we, we groan and we, we hurt. We hurt for others. We hurt for family members. We hurt for ourselves. We, we hurt in this life. But let me encourage you, this life is only temporary. Verse 4, it says, We are in this tent being burdened, not, to be, not because we want to be unclothed, but we want to be further clothed. That mortality may be swallowed up by life. He's saying, when we pass, for those that know Jesus, for those that have surrendered their life to him, when we pass, we will pass to eternity into a building that is made by God, that God has prepared for each and every one of his children. See, let me go on and read the second part of that verse, verses 6 through 10. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in this body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good <clears throat> or bad. See, Shirley knew this. She knew that she had a future. She had a future home. We have a, a guarantee through the Holy Spirit. That's the end of verse 5. When we receive Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit. That is the guarantee, the seal that God puts on us that we are his child. And we can be confident knowing that right now we are, all of you listening to me, we're absent from the Lord. We are not at home yet. We're not there yet. But for those that know Jesus, for those that have surrendered their life, we can be confident, verse 8, we're confident, yes, well pleased to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. For surely she is absent from this body. There is not anyone there. If we were to open that or a few minutes ago, if you came and saw the body, there's no one there. It's lifeless. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not living anymore, but she is. 
She still lives. Her body, her, her spirit passes on to this eternal home. It says we can be confident. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. So she's better off than we are. She's at home with her Savior, her Lord, her Savior, Jesus Christ. We can be confident. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be pleasing to Him. See, the only way to please the Lord is to surrender to Him. The only way to please God is to surrender and give your life to Him. My, my belief is if Shirley were here, not in her not in the Alzheimer's state, but if she were here in her right mind, she would be telling her family, her friends, her neighbors, if you haven't surrendered to Jesus, now's the day. Don't put it off. Don't wait. Don't stop. Because look at this last verse. Verse 10. It says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We're all going to appear before Christ. And we're either going to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, or we're going to hear, away from me, I never knew you. See, this life is not practice. This is the real thing. Your choice of where you spend eternity is determined as you live this life. Not trying to be good enough to please God, but by surrendering to Jesus Christ and Him, and him alone. It says that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. See, once we receive Christ, once we give our life to him, once we surrender to him, then we want to do good. We want to please him. We, want, we do the right things. We do the acts of kindness. We take care of our family. Why? Because we love Jesus, so we love everybody. Jesus died for the world. Surely knew that. Surely knew that she loved people because God loves people. She loved her family, her friends, her neighbors. She met, never met a stranger. She, that she, was, she was willing to help anyone. Why? Because she knew that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Because God loves the world, she loved the world. Because God loved her, she loved others. So know this, please, from this text, hear this part. We will all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to have to answer, did you surrender or did you turn me away? There's only two options. Did you surrender to him or did you turn, or did you turn him away? See, your decision, her decision, she made it. She's at home with the Lord. She's absent from the body at home with the Lord. Your decision in your life determines your future home, determines whether you will spend your eternity in heaven with the Lord. It changes your future home. So let me ask you this. Have you surrendered? Will you surrender if you have not? Surely did, and we've heard the, the great things that God did through her. I hope and I pray that you have. If you have not, let today be the day. See, her, her pain, her suffering is over. She has a new body. It is, it, it, it's bittersweet. We're going to miss her, yes. But we can know her suffering is over. Why? Because we can see the casket. We can see that she is, she's no longer here. She's at home with the Lord. And she, as I said before, is better off than us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do love you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for all that you're doing in and through us. We just pray that you will help us to remember this life, Shirley's life. Continue to help us to surrender to you if we have not and to live for you each day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away when I die. Hallelujah, by and by.
just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away. I'll We will miss Shirley, but her legacy will live on. Let's close our time together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do pray for this family. We pray that you'll strengthen them, encourage them, give them comfort and peace during the days ahead, the weeks ahead, the months ahead. And Lord, we just pray that you will help them to continue the legacy that Shirley gave, the example that she gave so that they can be an example just like her. We pray, Father, that you will just continue to take care of them, give them encouragement through good days and bad. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Our service will conclude at Blue Ridge Memorial Gardens. Thank you for being here today. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. Fly.